is a lecture for my professional responsibility course about a recent ABA ethics opinion about judges encouraging lawyers to do pro bono service. In 2015, the American Bar Association um, uh, published a formal ethics opinion, 15-470, uh, um, or sometimes just referred as ethics opinion 470, about judges encouraging pro bono service. Um, for my students, I'm gonna do a quick lecture about this only because it's a recent um, ABA ethics opinion. The MPRE has a kind of a regular practice, uh, it seems like in recent years, of um, asking uh, one of its questions about judicial ethics actually seems to be an, an issue or a rule flagged by a recent ethics opinion. And so it's worth taking a look at these or prioritizing these and studying for the MPRE. On the other hand, uh, this to me, uh, I gotta be honest with you, this one seems like pretty obvious that it's not it, in the, the bottom line, if you don't wanna watch the rest of this video, bottom line, it's okay for judges to encourage lawyers to do pro bono work. That's our bottom line. Okay, so the, the scenario though that came up, and I don't know, uh, to be honest, if someone complained about a judge doing this or if a judge wanted to do it and decided to double check and make sure it was okay or ask the ABA for an opinion letter, or if the ABA, this is kind of a passive aggressive way for them to encourage judges to do the thing that they're considering pro acting like um, it, uh, they're permitting, but they're really kind of planting the seed and wanting people to do it. I don't know why this happened, but basically, let's say you have a state Supreme Court judge who wants to sign a letter on the judge's stationery to a whole bunch of the lawyers or all the lawyers in the state um, uh, and mailing it uh, by the Unified State Bar Association, directing all lawyers licensed in the state um, and directed to all of them and encouraging those lawyers to meet their professional responsibility under Model Rule 6.1 of the Model Rules of Professional Conduct and provide pro bono legal services to persons in need and to contact the Bar Association for information about volunteer opportunities. So the question is, could the Supreme, uh, a judge um, from the Supreme Court of Texas or California or New York um, the, uh, uh, basically send a letter to all the lawyers in the state um, saying, hey, just a reminder that you kind of have an ethical duty to do some pro bono work. And even if we don't require a fixed number of hours, I think all of you should do it and so forth. And so the bottom line is a judge can do that. Um, a judge may uh, promote um, uh, broader access to justice by encouraging lawyers to participate in pro bono uh, legal services and if in doing so, um, the judge does not employ coercion or abuse of the prestige of judicial office. Such encouragement may take many forms, including providing lists of available programs, training lawyers to do pro bono work, participating in events, recognizing lawyers who have done pro bono work. So just to highlight the three things that we can do <clears throat> is um, number one, uh, some courts or some state bars have sort of a, um, Saturday morning like pro bono clinic where lawyers can just show up and then um, indigent um, parties can show up and kind of get assigned to have these quick um, half hour or one hour consultations with a lawyer before proceeding as pro se's, pro se litigants. And um, a judge could highlight that for them or a judge could um, say we have a training session. Remember one of the things that's off-putting for lawyers is, let's say you, re you spend your whole career specializing in corporate mergers and acquisitions. Well, a lot of indigent people who need pro bono work aren't doing corporate mergers and acquisitions, right? Um, and, or you're doing international corporate taxation, and so we don't get a lot of pro bono opportunities. And you don't know the first thing about how to do a prisoner civil rights appeal or a habeas corpus petition or, or something like that, some sort of pro bono case. and. Um, and so we may do uh, um, have training sessions so lawyers can kind of learn the basics about how to do uh, the types of, of cases that pro bono um, parties or, or recipients, and in other words, people who can't afford a lawyer and are, are likely good candidates for pro bono representation, um, that, that their types of needs. 
Um, also, we can judges can go to events and and stuff like that where we um, sing praises or recognize or give awards to lawyers who have done a lot of pro bono work. So a judge signing a letter encouraging lawyers to contact bar, the Bar Association for information on pro bono activities um, or for a list of available pro bono programs is consistent with encouragement uh, listed in comment five um, to, uh, to, to some of the rules. And this finding is in accord with a number of ethics opinions around the country. And so this issue has actually come up and a number of state bars have said that this is fine. So let's look at this, 3.7A2, this is in the Code of Judicial Conduct, does prohibit a judge from soliciting contributions on behalf of a nonprofit organization or governmental entity from anyone other than a family member um, uh, over whom the soliciting judge does not exercise super, supervisory or appellate authority. In other words, <clears throat> judges, uh, just to review this, um, in the Code of Judicial Conduct at 3.7, judges can't go around um, a right to lawyers asking them to please uh, donate to the Federalist Society or the ACLU or the Sierra Club um, or the Knights of Columbus or, or something like that. Um, they're generally prohibited from doing so. So the question is, does that apply to asking lawyers to donate their time um, for, to, let's say, a free legal clinic? And, um, and so, uh, now, direct requests um, uh, of in-kind services would normally qualify. So the judge can't ask people to please volunteer for the Sierra Club, um, let's say, um, by letter or telephone or things like that. Um, so normally, um, it, you, again, you, you can't ask people to volunteer to represent um, uh, churches or an immigrant group or, or something like that as a judge. Uh, but um, writing to all the lawyers saying, please do some sort of voluntary legal work um, is general enough, it's not a problem. Uh, 3.1 in the Code of Judicial Conduct um, says that uh, judges shall not participate in activities that interfere with proper performance of the judge's duties, participate in activities that lead to frequent disqualification or re recusal, um, participate in activities that would appear to undermine the judge's independence, integrity, or impartiality, Engage in conduct that would appear to a reasonable person to be coercive. Judges can't be coercive. And or make use of court premises, staff, stationary equipment, or other resources except for incidental use uh, for activities that concern the law, the legal system, the administration of justice, and so forth. <clears throat> and so a judge taking time to sign one letter that's going to be copied and sent to thousands of lawyers um, uh, is a de minimis activity. And so we, we're not talking, the judge isn't making the copies. The judge is uh, writing and signing one letter encouraging pro bono service and somebody at the state bar is going to run off copies and mail them to all the law firms. And in fact, rule 1.2 proclaims one judicial duty is to act in a manner that promotes public confidence in the integrity and impartiality of the um, judiciary and so forth. And that part of this under comment four is to promote the idea of access to all, uh, the equal access to the courts. And so the judge signing the, the letter is, in some, is arguably carrying out this duty. A judge who signs a general appeal a letter encouraging lawyers to perform pro bono service does not thereby demonstrate a bias or prejudice toward any particular pro bono organization uh, the people any organization serves or the lawyers who undertake that work. So this was one of the accusations, I guess, or, or concerns is when a judge sends a letter to every lawyer in the state saying, please do pro bono work, um, is that a way for the judge to kind of signal to the lawyers, by the way, if the ACLU or a nonprofit appears before me, um, <clears throat> I'm uh, biased in favor of them because I'm, or I'm gonna be biased in favor of a lawyer who's obviously doing a case pro bono. and that's not in the letter and there's no reason to infer that. Okay, a judge who signs a letter encouraging lawyers to seek pro bono opportunities by contacting the bar is not behaving unfairly, uh, dishonestly, or disrespectfully. And here I have a little picture of a, um, a, an old prison um, and because one of the uh, kind of chronic needs for volunteer lawyers is for um, prisoner petitions, um, prisoners who have a, a valid petitioner um, claim of, let's say, abuse by guards or something like that. Um, 
okay, so uh, impartiality is an absence of uh, bias or prejudice against parties and so forth. And we don't think that that, the ABA doesn't think that that's implied by a judge encouraging lawyers to do pro bono work. Now, at the same time, the ABA's committee um, did try to um, anticipate uh, extreme cases where this could actually be abusive or um, could be viewed as coercive. And so think about that. Number, uh, first, the number of lawyers who are going to get receive the letter in smaller jurisdictions or in limited scope mailings that are targeted to lawyers who practice in a particular area of law, it's possible that someone could feel coerced. In other words, if you want to be on the safe side, uh, as a judge, send the, uh, the letter to all the lawyers in your jurisdiction or district or, or something like that, or admit it to your state bar. Um, uh, on the other extreme would be you just picking one lawyer you don't like very much and sending that lawyer a letter saying, I think you really should be doing more pro bono work um, or something, because that lawyer obviously is going to feel, if, if they're the only one you're sending it to, uh, they should get a, it's reasonable for them to be a little paranoid and that is coercive, um, or at least passive aggressive. Um, uh, secondly, in the number of judges serving in the jurisdiction. And again, in smaller jurisdictions with, um, if it's, let's say there's only one judge in your jurisdiction and a lawyer getting a letter from the, that one judge might feel like this is heavy handed, right? And so as opposed to um, getting a letter from uh, the senior judge, the chief judge, but the lawyer's going to appear before different judges all the time. Um, also, whether it's personalized correspondence or kind of a plea to the bar as a whole. So if you're saying, dear attorney Stevenson, I think um, uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, sins you need to atone for, and you've uh, really been a kind of a jerk in my courtroom, and I think it would be splendid if you would do some pro bono work to make up for it or something like that. Um, if we're identifying the lawyer by name in the salutation, this looks uh, worse than if the letter is addressed to dear attorney or dear members of the bar, dear member of the bar or something like that. Um, also, is the judge going to, does the judge say in the letter that they're going to be monitoring um, which lawyers are doing pro bono work? That sounds, again, um, coercive or passive aggressive. If you say something like, um, by the way, I do look at the state bar's uh, reports about who has been logging lots of pro bono hours. And then just generally the tone of the letter. If you speak in aspirational tones, like, so, like oh, wouldn't it be great if we all did this? Um, and encouraging language that's different than a letter that features dictatorial condescending language, like what's wrong with you people? Um, how do you sleep at night uh, and, and so forth. Uh, rule 3.1 uh, cautions judges that when they engage in extrajudicial activities, they can't use court premises, staff, stationary equipment, and so forth, right? So um, don't run a publishing business with the copy uh, from the copy machines in the courthouse on the side um, and or rent out your uh, courtroom um, <laughs> to uh, to groups uh, doing wanting to do events um, when the courthouse is closed. But we don't think that you're really doing that, of course, um, uh, when you just send one letter. We already addressed that. Okay. Um, and so uh, also there's a rule against um, the, abusing the prestige of office. So you may remember from another lecture, judges aren't allowed to point when they get pulled over by a traffic cop for speeding, they're not allowed to say, you know, I'm a judge, right? or something like that. Judges shouldn't appear in commercials in their judicial robes for the local furniture store or something tacky uh, like that. Um, uh, and so does it violate things for the judge to use their stationery um, for this? Uh, the ABA says no. Um, okay, 2.4C says a judge shall not convey or permit others to convey the impression that any person or organization is in a position to influence the judge. And um, comment says uh, this would, uh, the comment uh, one says it would erode confidence in the judiciary if we did that. But the ABA thinks that a general letter of appeal mentioning no specific organization's need but instead encouraging, encouraging lawyers to perform pro bono service and directing them to contact the bar for opportunities is okay, right? So there we're not like 
flagging a particular nonprofit that the judge really likes or a particular cause the judge wants um, everybody to volunteer for. That's uh, very different, and by the way, than say this does, is not an ex parte communication between the judge and the lawyer because the judge is sending it um, to um, everybody. And um, <clears throat> so let's say uh, uh, if we're holding um, uh, separate and specially scheduled evening bond hearings or something like that, uh, the, the judge has, uh, those have been held to violate ex parte, uh, the rules on ex parte proceedings. Um, in conclusion, the state Supreme Court judge may sign a letter printed on the judge's stationery that is duplicated and mailed by a unified state bar association directed to all the lawyers licensed in the state, encouraging those lawyers to meet their professional responsibility and do pro bono work and to contact the bar to find out about opportunities to do so. That concludes our lecture.